Hello students. Today our lecture is the matrix method. When the optical system consists of several elements, for example, the four or five lenses that constitutes a photographic lens, we need a systematic approach that facilitate analysis. As long as we restrict our analysis to paraxial rays, this systematic approach is well handled by the matrix method. We now present the treatment of image formation that employs matrices to describe changes in the height and angle of a ray as it makes its way by successive reflections and reflections through an optical system. We show that in the paraxial approximations, changes in height and direction of a ray can be expressed by linear equations that makes this matrix approach possible. For example, consider this diagram in which we have multiple uh, lenses. Here is a thick lens, this one is a convex thin lens and another is a, conve a concave lens and at last we have a concave mirror. So let's suppose we have a point object placed at this point, which is at a height y o from the uh, uh, optical axis. And let's suppose a ray starts in this direction, which makes an angle alpha zero at the initial point with the optical axis. When the ray reaches point one, so here it suffers refraction and then similarly at point 2, at point 3, 4, 5, uh, at all these points the ray refracts and finally when it strikes at point 6, so it reflects and the final image let's suppose is formed at point 7. Now we want to find the height of this image which is at point 7 and it makes an angle alpha 7 with the optical axis. So, we can find the final information which is height, angle of the ray etc. in terms of the initial coordinates or in other words we can say that with the given input data which is y o alpha o we at point O, we wish to predict the values of Y7, alpha 7, at point 7 is the output data in the form of the matrix. So, first we are going to find the matrix for translation of light rays. The translation matrix. So consider an optical axis, this is optical axis. Let we have a point object here which is at point O and it is at a height y o from the optical axis and let a ray of light a ray of light starts to emerge from the point object and it is going in this direction so <coughs> at the starting point the angle of the ray with the optical axis was alpha not or alpha o and then the ray reaches here which is point 1. So we are going to find here the angle of the ray with the optical axis and similarly the height of the ray at point 1 from the optical axis. So as you can see that if we extend the ray in this direction so here the angle of the ray with the optical axis is 
y1 and the height of the ray from the optical axis is y1 and let the distance covered the distance covered along the optical axis by the ray is l let's suppose this distance in along the x axis is l so we are going to find alpha 1 and alpha y1 and we are given y0 and alpha0 so from the figure from figure we see that alpha 1 is equal to alpha 0 similarly you can see that this y1 is actually from optical axis to this point this is y o and let's suppose this distance is delta y so y1 is equal to y naught plus delta y from this right hand uh, angle triangle you can see that this distance is l this is delta y and we are going to find this delta y and we are given this alpha naught so from this we have 10 alpha 0 is equal to delta y upon l therefore delta y is equal to l 10 alpha so the above equation will become for y1 is equal to y naught plus l 10 alpha naught remember in paraxial optics tan alpha is almost equal to alpha naught therefore y1 will be equal to y naught plus l alpha naught this is equation number second so we can now we can have uh, we are having the two equations for the final coordinates uh, of the ray we can write we can write y1 as its coefficient is 1 1 y naught and its scope the alpha naught has a coefficient l l alpha naught this is equation number third and we can also write equation this is from equation number second and from equation one we can write it as alpha one is equal to is equal to zero why not because if you add zero with this equation so there is no change in the equation and zero multiplied by y naught again it will be zero plus one alpha naught this is equation number four so we got our final equations now we can write it in the matrix form which is y1 alpha 1 we have two linear equations and this can be written as their coefficients are 1 l 0 1 and we can write it as y 0 alpha 0 this is equation number 5 so <coughs> this 2 by 2 matrix this 2 by 2 ray transfer matrix represents the effect of the translation on array the input data are y naught alpha naught is modified by the ray transfer matrix to yield the correct output data y1 alpha 1 